All right, Iona, welcome back here live on the VG Sports Hub. We're back here in action, and we got you covered with uh, some NBA talk. And there's been a lot of buzz around the NBA also to be uh, relevant with uh, this weekend. The Cleveland Cavaliers played against the Houston Rockets, where uh, James Harden and LeBron James, the two elite players in the NBA right now, and... Uh, Basically, the faces of the NBA got into a bit of a scuffle on the court, and uh, where James Harden accidentally or purposely, purposely <laughs> actually, maybe we don't know, uh, happened to kick LeBron James in an area he did not want to be kicked in around the groin. So um, I think that uh, the actually what happened was the. The league suspended him for one game. Yeah, right? one game suspension, yeah. and they and they gave him a flagrant. They went and reviewed it during the game, yeah, and gave him a flagrant. But they didn't, you know, eject him or anything. Right. So now um, he was able to finish out play in the game, and uh, now tonight he'll be serving his one game suspension against the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah, good team. Right. So this is a time where they would, you know, they would have wanted him, but um, you know, things happen. So uh, there was a lot of buzz around this. So do you think that this was supposed to be made a big deal? Do you think he just did it by mistake in the in the moment? W- what was going on? Well, I saw I was watching that game actually. All right, right. it was on. Uh, I believe it was Sunday yeah, that Sunday. this game was. Yeah, in the afternoon to evening, whatever. Right. And I really it 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 was definitely on purpose because if you look at the replay, uh, they were wrestling for the ball. They're trying to rip the ball out of each other's hands. James Harden goes to the to the floor first. And you can see that when LeBron's leaning over, Harden, you know, sticks his leg out and he tries to kick him in the groin. Do I think it's being blown out of proportions? Probably, because it's LeBron James and James Harden, so you know it's going to happen. There's no way that they're not going to talk about this. Um, but what's really the bigger story is LeBron choking that that game. Um, oh, let's let's throws. let's get this straight. We all know I'm a LeBron fan. You're not. So. You know, it might sound a little biased the way I speak, but no, he he definitely ch- choked that game. He missed seven free throws and a lot of field goals down the stretch that he should have hit. Um, those that flagrant foul that got called on James Harden, those two free throws that LeBron got, he missed both of them. And then down down uh, in a stretch, they were down 104, 103. I think it was I don't even know what is it like in a few seconds left. He had two free throws to put the Cavaliers ahead, and he missed them both. So. You know, LeBron said after the game, you know, he had that whole selfie thing and he was talking about, you know, I tricked the game, whatever. So that's what the what the bigger picture should be. LeBron just messed up and he has to come back stronger. But, uh, you know, that's the whole thing there. But I have to say, personally, I think James Harden is the MVP this season so far. Yeah, actually. What do you think? I don't know. It could be Steph, but it's up to you. What do you think? Well, I was going to say, based on this topic, um, the Houston Rockets. I've been into Twitter now lately too. I know you see that. Yeah, of I've course. Been Twitter He's been back very, very heavily, and uh, on Twitter, I seen the Houston Rockets page tweet out that the real King, King James, James. Yes, I saw is that. James Harden. I did see that. So, um, you know, I think that James Harden runs that team. I, I mean, I'm not trying to take it away from LeBron, but I think that LeBron has other pieces, whereas. James yeah. Harden is over there. No, you're right. Not on his own. But Don't look, look at Dwight Howard's been out. Don't forget that. Yeah. It's really been yeah. Harden. Yeah, absolutely. He he's constantly dropping thirty plus points. You know, he's he's and he he does spread the ball. You have to yeah. look at his assists. He gets people he feeds the ball to them. I think he's got a great shot no matter what. Yeah. I think he can drive and get the N one perfectly. The handles are amazing. Handles, yep. He crossed so, LeBron this yeah, Sunday. He did, he did. Um yeah, in my opinion, I think if we're talking James versus James, I'm taking Harden as James. So right I mean, now, yeah. Other than Curry and all of them, we're gonna have to get into that another time. But on this topic, relevantly, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with James Harden as of right now for MVP. Right. Yeah, I would agree. Even though I, I'm a LeBron fan, I will I will wholeheartedly give this to J- James Harden. He really, right. don't forget, LeBron's been out of eleven games yeah. or so, and James Harden has not missed one game. No. Even if he's hurt, whatever, he played. So, the guy deserves it. I don't know. In my opinion, he definitely deserves it. Right. All right. All right. So, now, so, go ahead. You I'll ahead. just talk. I just wanted to really hit on these injuries real quick because we can really get a lot out of this. There's a lot of injuries going on. A, cu- a few main ones. And I'll I'll go first with your, with your favorite team here. We have OKC. 
Oh, uh, I know, yeah. you know, I know New York, the New York Knicks are really bad right now. We'll get into that in, in a few minutes, right after this. Um, I'm I'm a Knicks fan, but you're you you love OKC, and your two biggest pieces are out right now. Russ Westbrook, he had a, that that cheek fracture, if I if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And and Kevin Durant, another surgery, a minor surgery, but nonetheless another surgery. What's good for this for you guys right now is that they're only going to be out, or they're all, they're going to be reevaluate reevaluate, excuse me, already this week or into next week. They're not going to miss too much time. Right. And when we finished last semester, OKC was doing really bad because they, they'd been hit one after the other. Even Dur- Either Durant was out a long time or Russ Westbrook was out a long time. But look where they are now. They're in the eighth seed, and they might be pushing further. They could get to si- seventh or sixth maybe. Who knows the way they've been playing. So, um, like I said, the injuries are really unfortunate, but I don't think that it's going to stop them because it's it's not long-term not long-term injuries. Kevin Durant might be back next week or so, and he'll probably get back to you know his his normal self because he's always been successful. Um, we see him come back and not take that long to get into the rhythm. He's always going to score. You know, he's he's a long guy, big guy. He's going to be doing his thing. And Russ Westbrook um, might not miss that much time either. The only thing is that uh, it was a bit scary with his injury because we saw that um, he he. Could have possibly died. Did, did you hear that? That they said two two more inches and he could have died. Yeah, it was right near his temple. Exactly. Uh, I'm looking at a picture now as we speak. Actually, I yeah, it was pretty look. high up. Yeah. So, um, and the 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 horrible thing about this whole thing is that it happened with 2.5 seconds remaining in the game. Yeah, the game was about to finish, and yeah. he suffers this. You know, it's All, a really terrible thing. Yeah. Also, from his teammate Andre Robertson. Um, inadvertently need him in the face. Uh, yeah. And, you know, Russell was just being Russell at this point of the game. He, w- he was trying to get – he's an animal. He always tries to get as much as he can. He's been on yeah, – He's tenacious. He's still on his streak of three straight triple doubles. He's still on his streak. Right. And, uh, G, to actually um, uh, correct you, Westbrook will be back tomorrow night, actually. Oh, did they already clear yeah, him? Yeah. They, yeah, because what I heard from as of yesterday was they're going to evaluate him this week. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's all right. There you yeah. go. So, so. tomorrow he'll, they'll be home against Philly, and he'll be back, and he'll be on the run again for his uh, hopefully fourth triple-double. And that just goes to show you what kind of guy he is. Yeah. He's an, he wants to get on this court, and he knows he needs to lead the team without Durant right now. Absolutely. And he, um, he definitely knows that. I think that they also um, – uh, Oklahoma City has definitely stepped up oh, as a team. Definitely. For a definite fact. Um, and what I mean by that is how, um, you know, they they got a pickup now from DJ Augustine. Mm-hmm. He played well against the Lakers. I saw some of his, his performance yeah, the other absolutely day. Absolutely. Incredible. It, totally. I would be fine. I'm comfortable with having Westbrook and Durant out. I'm comfortable. Don't make, don't change my words. I'm comfortable. I, I would say that when it comes playoff time, we need them. Yeah, definitely. So for me to say that I'm comfortable with my two star players out, that I have DJ Augustine. Now we have Ennis Cantor. Yeah, I was just gonna say Kyle he's Singer. he's been big. Cancer. Yeah. He's double double Steven doubles already. Adams is out right yeah. now for us. We're yeah. struggling with injuries, yet our team is still pulling together. Yeah. And, and you guys let go of Perkins too, right. and you're still succeeding. So. So I'm listen, fine. it just means that when they're back, you guys are going to be on, uh, you know, a force to be reckoned with in the playoffs. Yeah, and as far as Durant goes, he'll be evaluated uh, sometime next week. Okay, he so said, next yeah. week, yeah. He said that he uh, he can't come back as of yet, but I know that both of these guys are the same type of guy. They want to be on that court, and I know that if Durant could, he would be right now as well. So we just have to wait patiently, and we have to wait for our time, but. We could be looking at an eight versus one seed, OKC ver- playing Warriors. At this yeah. point, I'm saying the Warriors are number one, no matter what. Yeah, I think they're going to finish number one. Yeah. So if we're looking at that as a as a first round game in the playoffs, that's like a that's like a conference final <clears throat> caliber thing uh, yeah. round you have there. Two great teams. Yeah, we're gonna have a great series. So. Great matchup. But wait, let me just ask you one thing yeah. before we move past the Thunder. I've been hearing, you know, I know Durant's your favorite player, correct? Yes. In the whole NBA. Yes. So. I've been hearing a bunch of things that since, you know, he he has recurring injuries with his feet and his knees or whatever, and it's scary now because he's still young. Right. Do you think that it's gonna 
it's going to be a detriment to his career. It's going to keep happening because they've been saying, you know, now they're worried that it's going to keep occurring and, and he's just going to go downhill from here. I don't think so. I think yeah. he's, he knows I what think, he's doing. I think that the league is a little bit stunned right now with what's happening with uh, Derrick Rose in particular. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And I think that a lot of people, because only because this is relevant right now. Yeah. So I think that a lot of people are thinking that Durant is, uh, I mean, of course, any player is prone. And so uh, yeah, it can happen at any time, right? So, but in my opinion, I don't think that uh, Durant is going to have a, an injury type of career. Um, I think that he's a a trained fighter, definitely, and tough um, tough mentality he has strong mentality. Yeah, come playoff time, he he'll be ready. Yeah, he'll be a hundred percent healthy, and that's when we're going to need him at most. So I look forward to seeing him. At his healthiest, because this season, thus far, I don't think we've seen him there yet. Definitely. All right, and then before we go into the Knicks real quick, because I know you want to touch on Okafor possibly being a draft pick, things like that. Right. I just want to say really quick, you know, not that Derrick Rose is ever going to hear this or anything, but I have to feel for the guy. He just, it's been terrible. The way he was playing, you know, four years ago, three years ago, when he was the MVP caliber guy, we know. He was unstoppable. He was the one of the best point guards in the league. And now just to see him keep keep getting hurt is just really uh really upsetting for me. I don't know. I, I really like the guy. I think he's he just he has no luck. He's just very unfortunate right now. And I, I don't know. I hope he, he can come back one to his back you know, full full potential one one year, I hope. But it's just not looking good right now. <clears throat> yeah, um, my comment on Derrick Rose. I don't know. I hope he's not done. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to say, but I think his time is done. Yeah. But the type of player that he is, I don't think he's done because he's always going to keep fighting, which is great. But if you look at his lifestyle, as if, if he was right in front of me right now, I would tell him these exact words. Look at your life and look at where you've come from. And at this point in your life, you already won. Yeah, that's what I would say. He's came. He's come from a horrible background in Chicago, poor. Um, he suffered huge multiple. family with the, you know him being the. I think he was the youngest or second youngest kid in his family. Um, you know, at this point, he made it to the NBA. He was definitely um, one of the most explosive players and point guards in the NBA. And, you know, it's sad to say, but I don't think we got to see all of his talent. Yeah, I, I don't think we ever did. But yeah. I don't think, you know, like I said, I hope he would, but I, I, I agree. I don't I don't know if, I don't think he can come back now yeah. uh, to, to his, you know, full full potential. It's just, it's, it's too too many injuries. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, as I said, I think that as, as far as it goes now, I think he won. In yeah, life, so. he, he succeeded. Yeah. All right, so then let's move to the Knicks real quick, and then we'll end this NBA segment. Yeah. I'll let you end it, but I just wanted to, you know, give you a segue into it. The Knicks have been terrible. We got Carmelo Anthony out for the rest of the year, and it's looking like we're going to be ending with the worst record or in the top 3 worst records in the NBA. Well, so you you I can go think ahead. That that my friend is a gift to you. I, I agree. I want you to end last because I want to just mention one name right now. Oh, I know it's coming. Jalil Okafor. I know it. Okay. So, Jalil Okafor, uh, the starting center for Duke right now, uh, probably going to win player of the year for uh, college basketball. Um, absolute animal beast one-on-one. I don't think he's guardable one-on-one. And I think that, well, we know almost certain that he's going to be declaring for the draft this upcoming uh, summer. And... Um, I think that huge, huge contribution for the Knicks. I think I, I would think so. Yeah. If if we get the don't forget because the NBA, I just don't like the way the lottery is it goes. Yeah. Because you can be the worst team and get the fifth pick, you know. Right. But I agree. If we're at one, we need a big man, and we need to take Okafor. Right. There's just there's no way you wouldn't take Okafor. Um. I heard, you know, Phil Jackson going with um, D'Angelo Russell. I'm not really too uh, sure what, what's going on with that because I don't really follow college basketball. I'll be honest. I told you this before. Um, but I have followed Duke, and I have I have um, 
seen Okafor come back from a few injuries and play big. He scored 30 the other night when he when they had a big win. So I would go with him. I think we need a big man because yeah, we already have Virginia Tech, right? Yeah, I believe it was on a weekend. Yeah, Virginia Tech. We already have Melo, who we're gonna have to deal with for the next four four years, five years, whatever his, his contract is. Um, and we, we'll, we'll, we can draft or sign a point guard, hopefully. But if if we can't sign a big man in the off season, and we can get a a big young man, you know, f- with a rookie contract like Okafor, we have to go for it. Yeah, Phil Jackson was down there wa- uh, scouting actually, uh, D'Angelo. Russell. Yeah, and he got into a little trouble for it. I heard. Yeah. Well, at this point, I think trouble is the yeah, least well, of his problems. Yeah. So he's he's he's. You know, in the centerpiece, and he's kind of getting blamed for a lot of this. Uh, right. Nick Nick's madness because of his triangle offense and Derek Fisher and whatnot. But right. but we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, you know, Okavor is an option for us. Right. All right. Well, that'll do it for uh, NBA for us for this week. We'll we'll get you covered next week uh, as the season unfolds. We're gonna start getting into postseason with that. So we're gonna have you covered on all that this entire for the rest of the semester. So uh, we're going to take a short break really quick before we wrap up. In our next segment, we're going to have MLB and soccer, which I will be included in this time. Yes, sir. So we'll take a short break. Don't go anywhere.